beautiful, Pat. You know, you reminded me of a story uh, that Wayne Shorter told me once. And it, it seems to me that both of you have this in common where you no longer think in terms of the traditional terminology that we've been given as musicians or the, the that that classic process of thinking of music in black and white terms of, of how to get somewhere where you got to play these particular changes or you got to play this particular scale. It's now on a much grander human scale now. And I remember doing a gig with Wayne. Uh, I was subbing a gig for his bassist and we had no rehearsal. I didn't know the book. Um, and then we got to go on stage in front of 3,000 people. So I'm scared out of my wits. I, I spoke to Wayne on the phone that morning. I said, Wayne, are we going to rehearse? No, I don't think we're going to have time. I said, well, um, you, you, you got any sheet music for me to read? Well, yeah, but a lot of that stuff that's on the paper, we don't really do it anymore. So I said, well, what do you want me to do? So it was this long pause, and it was great. Wayne said, well, I know you're a big comedy fan, right? You like Flip Wilson and Bill Cosby, all those old comedians, right? I said, yeah. He said, well, play that. <laughs> and just from working with you uh, so often, not nearly often as I hope to, but I know that will be rectified soon, but oh, I've, I've always you, felt that same, such a grander horizon working with you. You know, I don't get that feeling of, okay, make sure you nail this change the right way, you know, make sure you stay on top of the beat. You know, I always get this sense of of uh, playfulness, that the kind of, the, the, the human spirit, which is what matters the most. I think so. I yeah. think so. There's, there's something that, that uh, I find most interest um, in the study of that transcends its division into different forms of education or different forms of... Um, commercial marketing, in a sense, commercial marketing. You know, um, one of the things that I think is, is, is very interesting, at least to me it is, about the study of music. I, I believe that I came to learn all of the things that teachers, that instructors charge students for at a much earlier age, long before I was told that my interest was music. When, my, when I was told that my interest was music and that I should study with a music teacher, I then was first introduced the first time to what the, the instructor, the music teacher, called a chromatic scale. And the the and, and the teacher also had other terms that he referred to as minor thirds, major thirds, perfect fourths, intervals, the, the division of the 12 notes of the scale, the chromatic scale, 12 notes. It dawned on me at a very early age that, wow, he's charging me for something I already know. But I didn't know the terms that he was teaching. I knew the 12 months, what he referred to as the, the chromatic scale, I also knew as the 12 apostles. He knew this as 12 tones of music, and he said if you divide that into minor thirds, that's going to be four, there's four minor thirds in a 12 tone scale. Well, I knew that as the four seasons of the year. Mm -hmm. What he called an octave, I called it, I learned as a year. Mm -hmm. And it dawned on me at a, at a very early age that marketing, in a, in a grand sense, had a lot to do with packaging different manifestations of the same simplistic, honest, natural truth what worked in the sense of the division. Um, it was easier to see the piano as seven white keys and five black keys. 
white and black. I also knew as yin and yang, good and bad, man and woman, opposites. And seven plus five equal 12. And I, that's what I've studied. And that's what I, I'm really interested in more than anything, the major and the minor, you know, uh, the opposites, objectively from a distance, seeing both of them from a distance, um, turns music into a, a tool that can be used for multiple persons. The fact that you have gone uh, internationally as a representative for the museum um, has much more to do with social interaction, cultural interaction, than music itself. Right. And, and I think that there's something about that that transcends uh, a younger individual who has the opportunity to participate educationally in a study of jazz as a form of, as a, as a profession, primarily because being subject to, to the music industry as being packaged to be sold in that context is not enough to be able to move forward in multiple directions that, that are taking place today with the expansion and the evolution of technology itself. So there are many things that I think uh, the, the youth today has to consider with regards to their study of any, any single thing as opposed to also the addition of a viewpoint that encompasses the whole the unification of all these things. I saw that in John Coltrane. I saw that um, in Cecil Taylor at a very early age. The, the fact that uh, Train had to say and establish a love supreme, the enjoyment of living, the, 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 total, the total realization of why am I here? You know. So that became the achievement that transcended the, the tools, the instruments that were uses that, that provided uh, what was needed as vehicles to, to transport each of us as individuals to higher levels of consciousness and awareness and sensitivity amidst insensitivity as a lesson to, to become stronger and uh, more virtuous in the process.